there we are. Sounds, I feel like starting somebody else's meeting, but hi, I'm Jennifer. <laughs> this is going to be a crossover between the, I'm Jennifer Weston, facilitator of the cataloging interest group. And this was supposed to be a crossover, and it is a crossover between reports interest group and the cataloging interest group. And what we had hoped to do was resurrect this list from last June was when the last conference was. We had a brainstorming session on things we would like to see. So you've got a link. Well, let me put both of these links in there. It looks like um, folks in the catalog interest group had it, but I'm going to put these in the chat. There are two links I'm going to put in the, the chat here. One is just our, our cataloging interest group report pondering list, things we'd either like to see or we wonder if it's possible to report on. So let me do this real quick. This is link number one going in the chat. Link number two will be the notes from our session last June. So you can kind of see the free flow conversation that several of you were there actually, but this hasn't been pretty up since last year, but it does have a, you know, a lot of really great ideas in there. So let me share this one as well. There we go. The general idea of this conversation with catalogers came up because we were talking about collection development. And because Evergreen doesn't have necessarily any kind of dashboard currently that to provide us insight into our collections without us just writing our own reports, we started talking about what that might look like. And that's what all of our notes are there about the kinds of questions that we might want to to investigate, to be able to do beyond just being able to give us, you know, our weeding reports and then our basic circulation numbers. And what I pulled out of that is this list of suggestions into this cataloging interest group list there, the um, list of reports, I guess I should say. We shouldn't just call it the interest group, that's weird. So looking at, look, okay, we'll just say reports. Report ideas, okay, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, thanks, Elizabeth. I just saw your note that Jessica won't be able to make it. Yeah, okay. So I've lost my access to my email, so thanks for letting me know that. All right, so I thought what we would do is instead of walking through all of our notes is just introduce this idea here. And then also I wanted to, to, mark, to promote this list one more time. And we've gotten at least one additional question just here in the last, oh, Mackenzie, you're just going to, okay. Mackenzie's going to just add all the, the all, you know, all of his, suggestions here, which is fantastic. We had this top 20 just to give you an idea where we were. So uh, since June, we haven't really added to it. I'm thinking perhaps a thing to do would be for today, kind of just open this up to the kinds of things. Is anybody already using really good reports they would like to share? That's also uh, one thing that we were trying to encourage. And I'm sure, and I know the reports interest group was trying to do that as well. This is also the place you can do that is just add a note about I've got this really great port, uh, report and I would love to share it. Feel free to just add that all here at the same time. I, I think for lack of any other kind of structure, I will just start at the top and then if of the list and we can just put some more notes in here as we go, kind of use this to, to spark our uh, conversations today. So let's start at the top and keep adding as you go. First of all, we talked about chronological hold request. So many of our conversations had talked about wanting to be able to look into the mark record. And that's the reason this was coming from the from the cataloging interest group is that we get a lot of a lot of requests and a lot of questions about can you report from the mark record? And you can using the advanced reporter. And I'm seeing Carol's note again about um, Jessica's message to the group. Yeah. And she's canceled the meeting. That's okay. We're just going to go ahead. If you're all okay, we'll have our shadow meeting today. So a lot of these, I was, as I was saying, let me stay focused here. It was about trying to report out of the mark record itself. And this is something that Rogan Hamby and I had, had talked a lot about over the last year or so leading up to this meeting was um, trying to engage the community to see what kinds of things you might want. Because he and I have talked about things we think were cool, but we thought at the very least we could start with you know, a handful of these put in launchpad bugs to get the to get feedback to kind of frame what these are and then build through the reports interest group, build some of these reports that we can actually share. 
So part of this is going to be what's feasible and what's low hanging fruit that we might be able to do and what, you know, would require development help that we'd only be able to do with, with anybody that has access to SQL reports. Okay, so let's just start at the top and I, I feel lost without being able to take notes somewhere. So I am going to just suggest that we just start a new, nope, here's what I'm going to do. The bottom of this list under next steps from last June, I'm going to start next. So as we go down to February. There we go. That way if anything comes up, I got them. I'm lost without a notes document. Hey voila. Right. Here we go. Oh yeah. So here, this first one, chronological hold request relevant to a specific author, series, and publisher. Off the top of my, here's what I'm going to do. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure where we would start there. But I'm going to look, just open this up after each one of these if I say I'm not sure. So, oh, Chris is here too. Hi, Chris. Hi, Taryn. I haven't looked up to see who else is here. I'm very glad you're here. We're kind of winging it right now. So thank you for being here. So let me ask this question. When I'm thinking of looking at this first report, and we'll work through just this list as we can, and then I'll, I'll I'll keep promoting this a little more than we have in the last few months. Chronological hold request check. I know how we can do chronological hold request. You just pull your hold request and the date they were requested, but about a specific author, series, or publisher. And I'm wondering, would we think that, that would be kind of an on demand where you would just put in what you wanted, or is this kind of the thing that we would want? The most popular. I'm just going to do questions over here. Let me see. So, what do we want? I'm going to put notes over here. Questions. So, on demand, like one of those. I used to have a, a troubled a troubled patron report, and I could just type in the the patron's barcode and and pull up activity on them. So, I'm wondering, and kind of in the more positive spit on this, if we would just want an on demand by individual parameter. So, you know, type in the author's name, for example. But that's just name. We would need all of that. If you want to hold request by a specific author. And when Rogan and I were doing this presentation last year, he was talking about something he did. And I was there. He wanted to see who the most popular authors were with holds. Oh, gosh. And he was looking at DVD collection. And I don't. Gosh, if anybody remembers what his. Would it be like a holds ratio? It is a holds ratio. But I think it's more than that. It's looking at specific authors. So holds ratio would give us, let's let's make it. Holds ratio would give us most popular. But what if we wanted to go beyond that into well, ratio into genres and into so beyond that, into more specific narrowing of results. So by, I guess, genre, maybe, pub date, so only the new stuff. Is this the one where he, because he, he did a presentation at a conference once where he showed the number of holds requests mm -hmm. over the time mm -hmm. of like publication. So like Stephen King, every year that this a new Stephen King title was added, like oh. are they are you increasing or decreasing the interest, I guess? I really like that. Um I'll see. I think it was it was in an in-person conference, so I don't think it'll be available online. But he might know. He will. And he's He's, he's got a conflict today. So over here, um, Katie and Rogan. I, I'm remembering more about the one that, because it wasn't the same one, Elizabeth, but I'm trying to remember the, the other one that he looked at was moot DVDs that circulated based on actors that were in them. So which actor was the most popular in DVDs? Which is a very, very specific oh, example. That's very specific. Yeah. And that's, 
it was somebody could be like, in the record <laughs> yeah. right 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 yeah this is all about that. <laughs> that, that that's very contingent on an actor being listed in in one of the main fields mm -hmm. and i'm trying to remember who the actor actually was it was somebody it was somebody kooky like jeff goldblum it was not jeff goldblum for the library he did the report on that, that you know, i digress there okay yeah all this is going to be based on how good our data is so in general, I, I like that one, Elizabeth, the request over time to increase or decrease interest. This could be in you know, for authors so that you can see if Stephen King ever falls out of favor. We could predict that over time. So that's the chronological hold request. That makes sense. Chronological hold request. And we're saying oh, essentially over a period of time. And we could do that with series. I'm not really sure. Well, I guess publisher too. That would be kind of cool. Fan fact here. So yeah, it really is kind of all of these are going to be on demand. Let me just take that off. Anyway. What do we call this year every year? Patterns. There we go. That one we think is doable now if we just get a good description and a good example. So let's just use, let's do that then. Let's say Stephen King is an example. Example for proof of concept. Stephen King last three years. Let's say that. If anybody sees anyone, any other list, anything on this list that they want to highlight other than me just going right down through the order, if you want to skip ahead, please let me know because again, we're just kind of getting some ideas out there really to do this whole idea of being able to create a report, share it between our two interest groups for things that are not our typical reporting. So report by org unit, how popular has this title been for my patrons? Do I need to buy this and how many copies? So this is, will be a cons probably working within a consortium you want to know but i want to know specifically for my patrons do i need to buy this and how many copies so really you're pulling a circ report just for your patrons let me see if i can capture this definition circ report let me say in a consortium first because that's otherwise Libraries of this. Okay. Circ report good enough? Do we need holds in addition to that? Maybe be two different things, but yeah, maybe where the owning library is different than the pickup library. Oh, yeah. So this is almost two different things. One could just be, you know, you know, owned, but let's do this. So option one. Like in a hypothetical situation where your library doesn't own it, so you're getting it from someone else all the time. Okay, so for items or items owned by another by other mm -hmm, mm -hmm, by library. By another library. Not the patron's home library. And the simpler version of that is just the circ report for my patrons of any titles. So it might be a very popular, if you're doing a circ report for across, you know, your bib records and all that sort of stuff by the whole consortium. I guess you have those already though, don't we? I mean, that's your kind of basic circ report. You're looking at all things owned by everybody. All right, let me take that off. I'm completely in stream of consciousness today. And I apologize that that's how my brain's working, but we'll get the notes down and it'll make sense. Circle report for items owned by another library, not the patron's home. We can do that. 
Search stats based on bid record subjects and item record shelving locations. Those are two different things. Bib record subjects and item record shelving location. Don't Do they want them in this same report? That would be tough, wouldn't it, Elizabeth? I mean, yeah, we could do shell. We can certainly do shelving locations, and I think we could do bit records subjects. But I think yeah, yeah, sort of. Sort yeah. of, Mackenzie. Um, I mean, I mean, like each individually, I think could be done. Okay. Like probably, probably, like you know, maybe yeah, search staff by subject. Mm -hmm. Like maybe a better way, like another way to sort of reframe that. Like here, here, here is a subject, and then here. Are the search stats connected for every for every record that, or for yeah for every bid record that this this subject points to, here are the search stats for those amalgamated. Can you hear me? Yes, Chris. Yes, now we can. Okay, I have a new headset, so I'm not sure. Um, that is actually a report you could do as is in one report. Yeah. Um, you could uh, you would have to go into the bid record, um. It's, it's totally doable because yeah. really now filtering by both gets complicated, but at least displaying both and filtering by one uh, is definitely possible. When we say doable, is that through the user interface? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm anxious to try that one out. I'm yeah, I've, I've had similar requests or what it's worth. Very nice. I think there's value in doing them individually too, but seeing them both together is. Yeah, I guess you could sort of combine it. Like again, sort of saying filtering, like you'd be like for this subject and then and then like sort of branching out sort of thing, like subject and then branching to each of your different shelving locations and then the number three, yeah, okay, yeah. And, those, and, then, and then those the shelving locations sort of repeat for each subject as, as viable okay yeah and it's it's also probably in the user interface it's probably very difficult to ha have the uh, subjects as a filter because uh, you would have to know the exact wording of the subject and type it in that wouldn't be in any sort of drop down the yeah. shelving locations would mm -hmm. so Filter by shelving location display subjects, that's very doable. And because it, McKinsey and I are enjoying work, and Darcy are enjoying working so much together on other projects, I heard McKinsey absolutely volunteer to do that one and share it with us. <laughs> how it works. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's what I heard. I heard, yeah, that's totally doable. And and Chris confirmed it's totally doable. So McKinsey's all over this one. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Do do not do not volunteer me for I'm a quarter project, Jennifer. When I barely when I I I am much more comfortable running an SQL query than I yeah. am poking around poking around the reporter, even though they're functioning on the same logic. So yeah, I hear you. Okay, you're, you can pass. Which Thank means you. at some point you are a a great, and we should do this in, when we're all together in a room sometime. But um, it's really nice to be able to to do the, the quality control and you know, run it on the SQL side and then run it in the user interface and see if we're getting the same results and, and kind of can, yeah, do some quality control in the UI. All right, Beth is asking, would sub subject be determined by subject headings or by call number range? And yeah, you could do it both ways. Yeah, call number range would be easier in the, the uh, staff reporter. It's easier, but not as precise. You have to be really <sighs> good about knowing your exact call numbers. Yeah, that's okay. a new call number range source, right? In the traditional or the simple reporter? Oh, the traditional one. I think Jason Boyer added a, a couple of new sources for us for call number ranges a version or two back. Really? Yeah, let me put that somewhere in my notes so I can check that.
Yep, yeah, the call number ranges. I'm fairly certain. It's Dewey. I mean, that's the thing. It's not there for, for Library of Congress. Pros and cons for either of those. Yeah. Friends. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I had one so, more monitor, I would be looking this up at the same time, but I don't think too many things going here. <laughs> I would I would recommend doing it more on the shelving location because mm -hmm. if you have them, because we have a few libraries that don't have detailed shelving locations, so they have to do things by call number. Mm -hmm. And they always forget about like old call numbers that we don't mm -hmm. use anymore and never updated. So mm -hmm. not always. I'm just gonna put that in it's there. Recognizing it's not precise, but it gets us there. And we start with a small sample set of that anyway to see how it was working. I'm excited that this one's totally doable. I wouldn't have thought, you know, I'll have to play with that one. To its allow. Let's see how many other things we can get totally doable on this list then. Better ways to analyze, okay, that's just a very subjective list there. Better ways to analyze subject heading and density coverage linked to item counts. That's one of those big collection development. Uh, questions there yeah. kind of, yeah but if we're already doing reports on subject headings and we're not trying to filter on them then yeah it, that's if a start. you cast if you cast a wide net mm -hmm. uh and just i don't people want the reporter to do more than it makes sense to do mm -hmm. uh but if if you get like a really large set throw it in a spreadsheet and then let a cataloger you know, pour through it, that that seems like the right approach rather than getting it super targeted on that report. Which is exactly the way I learned to do reports. Huh. Just pull a great amount of data, throw in Excel, and I can get what I want. Excel can do so much more than evergreen reports that Mm -hmm. Evergreen should really just be thought of as a data source rather than trying to get it all done in the reports interface. I really love that approach. It would save so much time to yes. dump it all out. Mm -hmm. Darn, that's not exactly what I wanted. Let's do it all over again. I'm like, nope, just give me the data. But we can absolutely start with just analyze subject headings. How many do we have? Who has them? There you go. What else is on here? Identifying records that are missing good subject headings. Okay, Darcy and Mackenzie, this is our authority records list here. The ones that are missing good subject headings and or subject headings altogether. We're going to take that one on from the authorities working group, sort of. Yeah, well, this one is that much, is that much. Yeah. Missing, okay, missing subject headings, that's sort of a, a reverse blind heading. Exactly. Or, or blind, blind headings pointing in the opposite direction. Yeah, no, this is what Darcy is saying. Good, good records without six FX. Um, yeah, I think missing subject headings altogether is, you know, again, that's the one that would be the easiest to do. But then the good mm -hmm. subject headings is the subjective take there. But we're working on slowly. Yeah, those ideas. I mean, that could be a case. I mean, where you talk about good subject headings, that you know, condition them. So do you know? Are, do you have, you know, what what uh what authority records do you already have uploaded? Let's assume your authority records are good because you're getting them from you've, you've gotten them from a a, a reputed source um sort of thing so that could be like we're talking about like quote unquote good subject headings that could be you know, sort of again that's sort of comparing against your authority records um mm -hmm. again assume yeah which of course is yeah contingent on having authority records right uh, so the basic here is just missing headings altogether. I mean, that's the so. Yeah. And then the other is, do you have subject? And Darcy asked what's good. Yeah, I think to your question, Darcy, of what's good. I think it's yeah, form. I guess mm -hmm. formatting, formatting in comparison to an authority. Like, is it just something someone put in there, or is it an actual like preferred heading authority, like preferred heading authority type thing? I, I don't know. That's my interpretation of quote unquote good. Um, can you use the record quality? Is that record quality? Oh. No, 
What are you thinking? I don't, I am. I'm not a cataloger, so I should preface all of my <laughs> questions with that, but I, I've I, used. I think that's, I think that's manually set somehow. I... Is that set at the item level instead of the, or is it set for the bib record too? There is a bib record quality field, I believe, but I'm, yeah. I'm not I, sure what As a cataloger, I've missed on. that too. So, yes. mm. But yeah, we'd have to discuss what is good. So let me make a note that there is a, there is a, uh, a legend of a quality indicator for bibs. And we believe that's just set manually. I mean, there's no real analysis behind it. It's just that, hey, we think it's good and we said it was good. Or that our record source thought it was good and therefore told us it was good. I feel like someone told me it depended on the number of oh. fields. All right, let's see what, let me, let's find out what that is. We'll leave that as a thing to do. How is this defined? And if that's the truth, I mean, at least we could really get a report of that, the, qu the quality of the bids. I've seen that, actually, now that you say, I'm thinking maybe we've seen that work when we're looking at dedupes. You have to just do duplication reports. You have to define which record is the best. And there's definition behind that. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to check out that number. We'll find out. That's not exactly what this report's looking at, but I think it would also be interesting to have a report that just tells the number of subject headings on records too. Because there's the, you know, it has one, somebody put fiction on there and that's not altogether helpful. Or you have the, the opposite of that, somebody, we have, you know, 50 subject headings and they're all showing up on the public catalog and, and it's too much. But that would be a different report, I guess. Elizabeth has given us a link. What are we looking at here? Aha, quality metrics. Bad. I'll just put that over here on our notes too. Quality records to make important decisions based on quality. Okay. The encoding level record attribute can be one can be one indicator of record quality. So the encoding level. You can use a value in a record attribute or a mark tag as your quality metric. So how does this actually then? It 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 has to be imported through Vandalay for gotcha. that to be. So this is part of the match set this. definition. Yes. Got it. And if it matches, 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 then I guess that means. Yeah, it's better than. It's better so, than something that doesn't. So is this then actually stored somewhere, or is it just a a tool for just for for matching and importing? I've run reports on it. Well, there you go. I don't know. That Maybe. lives somewhere then, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll see if I can find which one it was. I'm learning all kinds of things today. I'm glad we didn't cancel the meeting. Stored somewhere. There we go. Let's just keep floating, floating through these as the next one's floating. Let's see if we can just do a doable, you know, currently doable or not list. So if they're currently doable, that just means we've got some work to do. So let's do that. Reports to help with floating redistribution. I think that's just a matter of what lives where, right? And then, so if everything's ended up at one library, you can pull a report based on your floating collection. And it's just a, account at that point, I think. So I think that one's doable. We're now going to call these can do. Identify records that need updated subject genre headings. I'm going to put that in the realm of authorities working group. I'm looking because we've got about 15 minutes left is the reason I'm skipping ahead on here on some of these. So how here's 
I might have typed that incorrectly. Let's see. Here's the author. How popular have their titles been? That's kind of the C number one, right? C report number one. Yeah. Oh, well, you're starting with the author. So C item number one. But starting with the author. The author. So we have a filter there, which means we need a filter by well, name. With all of the nuance and no, no, no. I'm, I'm everything hearing that that's... today <laughs> yes with all of the very but if yeah because we... yeah there's there's going to be more than one you know author of every name but we have an authority record so i've not tried right, to... so yeah hmm that 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 assumes a lot about the bib the quality of the bib and authority uh database it does that that you're working with and catalogers always assume that's better than it is unless they've worked in data mm -hmm. and then they know that it's not <laughs> yeah i think we've uh mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We're, we're with you <laughs> absolutely Start pulling a report and you don't get what you want. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because everybody else who did it did, you know, didn't do it quite as fully as they could have. Yeah, with all the variants, it's tough. But you know, we can have a starting place there. And then it'll just tell us how either how good the consistency is in your cataloging or not, their authority records or not. <laughs> Quality is stored as no wait, I'm wrong. Hold on. I'm still researching it. I okay. thought I had it. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. I do that all the time. Wait, wait, wait. All right. We're thinking this one is author by name is, is a fun one to tell you. Actually, it's a good quality report to tell you how good your uh, your authority records and Kelling really is there. Just pull a report by author. Okay. Next, separate out circulation at the owning library versus other libraries. We've talked about that one already, except for perhaps an item status. I don't get the item status relationship there. I'm missing something. I'll go back in the sheets. Let me know what this is. Number two, see item number two. Anybody know what that might have been? It broke it out in when you view the item, an item status. Is that what that means? are they just trying asking to be able to tell how many times it's circulated at your at its home library versus at other libraries that's what i was thinking and then i don't know if item status was just because yeah. item status just has the count yeah so maybe they just want the count broken out that's not something that our libraries have ever asked for but it might be useful yeah and I've seen libraries use, you know, just that basic part about what's, because the, the idea here is if it's circulating in a library, not my own, do I need to buy it? Is, I guess, the one of the use cases for that sort of thing. And in that case, you need a little more detail to say, and it could, I, I've always kind of dreamed of having a resource sharing report like that, that would say, okay, here's going to look at what's circulating otherwise but then also being able to narrow down if genres so if you know if i own a lot of westerns and but they're not circulating to my patrons but they're you know circulating to another library then i don't need to keep buying them because i'm now buying them for another library that's true yeah. i mean that could be done using transit data i guess mm -hmm. right now yeah let's just make a note here to say um Also include transit data. Review. Marie, is it the item status what where it is available in transit and processing? It's a, yeah, it's, it's a status of what's it doing exactly. But you can still get circ data even after it's no longer circuit, you know, circulating. So if it's available, we've still got circ data on the fact that it did circ. So, that is. So yeah, we can. Well, we know we have CERT data. So let's see, next one, number 10, total CERCs. Calculate CERT data, not just for this copy, but over all copies or even all editions or formats. That's asking for meta record CERCs. Mm 
right? People that know more than I do. Is that something we can do? I mean, I know that I'm asking, can we do through the user interface? Because I know that that's the, I mean, that's the way we group things together and all that logic is there somewhere. But is it something we could use to report on across formats and editions? Call that one tricky. I don't think I've ever tried to do a report based on meta records. I've done reports that showed whether a hold was a meta hold or not. Right. But that just in display, but I haven't tried doing a report based on meta records. Where do we send that out to just to kind of look at the stratosphere to try to see if anybody else has thought about that kind of thing i wouldn't know where to start with reporting on meta records meta meta record hold you can because there's that hold type that you pull from it says it's meta record hold uh, just a search there's process. a there's a meta record source nice at the beginning. Too many things to say. This is the reason everything ended up on our list because they're all really great things we wanted to know. And then here we are, almost June again. All right, I can't solve all of them. Let's see. Next one. Easy way to find hold. <laughs> easy way. I should never type that in a reports list ever. But an easy way to find hold ratios for specific libraries within a consortium. Well, we I think that's doable. Um, the easy we, have, we have a special source that's um, hold copy ratio per bib and pickup library and descendants. Do you now? Yeah, we because we needed that. We needed to know how many. So you actually that. So we had that. Yeah, we needed that exact report. So I don't know if it's. Yeah, I guess it's custom. Well, I put that in there too quickly. Maybe oh, no, I'll put special back there. So if anybody's interested in doing that, they could talk to you about how that works. Would that be okay? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure how we would get it. it to them. Nope. <laughs> But we could like, ask Equinox. <laughs> yeah, really. I'm just thinking sometimes it's nice to see what it does. So, you know, if it's just yeah. a matter of, you know, just kind of screen sharing and say, here's what, here's what I do. Here's what my source looks like. Here's what my report looks like. Or even the output of the report would be nice. Hmm. I'll come back and fix it right there. Okay. Nice. That's really nice. Okay, next, cert totals to include weeded items. All right, we can do that. Because it still lives there. Unless you purge the database, so that we can do that one. Another easy one, an easier way to see historical cert data after items are deleted. I guess that's a report question. Yeah. Aren't those two cuts? What data do they need? Number of circs, last circ, that kind of stuff. Okay. Wouldn't that that would kind of all go into what you would pull for weeding, though? Similar. How is, how is how easy is it to see deleted items in a reporter currently? Again, coming from that, it's pretty easy to do it in SQL. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That yeah. That information is all there unless it's um, totally you know, like an, an archived or something. Yeah. You just use that. Well, the is, the, is the archive certs, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the archive certs are still connected to the items or, you know, item and bib. So you, you could get, get to that. Th that seems like a corner case need to me, though. Mm hmm. I mean, if somebody's weeding way too early to need that kind yeah. of information, somebody needs more to do. 
Yeah. If you're waiting too early, you really do. <laughs> yeah. Unless I, don't know, I was going to kind of think if it's a case where they're thinking that books are being damaged and removed for the collection for reasons other than weeding, lost or damaged, but, but yeah, that's definitely a corner case. Isn't it? Verging on edge. But it's there. I mean, there's a, is, there is, no, there is, is. There's a, that's a, and a, a, I'm not gonna worry about that. All right, reasons for deleting items, whether it's used, damaged, or never checked out when influence collection purchases. Do we store the reason you're deleting something? Is that something else I don't know about? No. no. Okay. It'd There's be no. mildly cool, but kind of frustrating at the same time. Mm -hmm. Although, I mean, even though we don't store that, you you could see how many times it was checked out to kind of get to that information backwards. True. Or whether it had a, I don't know if it would store if it had been marked damage at some point. Probably not. As a person who's done collection development before mm -hmm. that doesn't seem super useful to me but anyway i'm, I'm not the one yeah asking. i'm same here <laughs> when i did collection yeah, development too. it was almost entirely from the new books catalogs mm -hmm. it, it's yeah it's a little like wanting a reason why you threw away trash yeah or gave something to goodwill it's like you know once it's gone does it matter i mean if there's i could see if there. I could see people wanting that for very specific items sometimes if they were being challenged as to why they got rid of something. Oh, mm. that's new. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And it, like, if, why the did, person who yeah. Put, if the person who put that down is on the call, I'm sorry for being so glad. <laughs> well, it helps to ask the question about why we need it. Okay. Well, let's see. Darcy's got a note in here. I wanted to throw in chat really quickly before I talk. King County uses some Native Evergreen reports, but also a lot of Power BI reports. Yes, you've got some great ones. A couple of reports I really like are, okay, I'm going to get this out of the chat because I don't know where that chat note is going to be stored. So I'll just grab this. Thanks, Darcy. And I'm going to throw Darcy's long note over here about the report she really likes. So we get those. And then I'll incorporate them into, into our notes. Appreciate it. Yeah, we just got a few minutes left. Let's see. Um, different shelving locations, same title. We can do well, sort of. We can get uh, those are that's again, Chris. I think on that kind of thing, uh, that's you just dump your data and, and spend some time looking at it. If you want to see different shelving locations for the same title, as long as the same bibs, certainly you can do that. But if you're looking for again meta record stuff, that's different. Yeah. All right, and let's do one more. Comparing if something circs better in certain shelving locations. Is it doing us any good to have Western's location or should they just be with regular fiction? Well, that's you know, an overtime kind of report, but why not? Just put in a shelving location. You just look at subject and shelving location and see circ. Yeah, that's interesting. People really are thinking a lot about their collection of Well. I mean, that seems like the kind of thing people want to purchase, you know, Collection HQ and mm -hmm. Edelweiss and those kinds of, you know, deep metrics tools. But again, like, so it's not really about the reporter and it can a report happen because it can, obviously, mm -hmm. but you'd have to track it and you'd have to do the comparisons and charts and stuff to make your decisions, but. And this is an overtime kind of report too. I mean, it's, you know, if you go right. back in time, you're thinking, well, I had a Western in, in two different places and yeah, that's, you lose your context there. Right. Cause there's not anywhere in Evergreen that compares multiple reports outputs that exist. I mean, nor should yeah, there be in my opinion. No, no, I no. think that's just be, beyond the scope of an ILS. It truly is. We don't need year over year reports that way. That's right. keep your data somewhere else. These are very interesting conversations. Since we've gotten started, I'd like to keep going, but I wear our time's up. Thank you to everybody that came into our 
is it going to happen or is it not going to happen call today? I'm going to send this back out. Not today because I'm in calls the rest of the day, but probably tomorrow just to say we've gotten started on this and see if anybody, you know, just encourage people to keep adding questions here. But I think Grace, you make a good point about whether or not we can do it or not. It's a, yeah, some of it comes down to how you're going to use it. And yeah, do do we want an ILS to do everything but the kitchen sink? You know, yeah, and and we all agree now. So that <laughs> we had the conversation, we made the decision for the community, so it's determined now. That's right. You yeah. and I did it. Yeah, that's right. Also, and you know, there were no, you know, see, no, McKenzie gets kicked out. I'm sorry, I didn't see his open source kitchen sink. He's, he, I, I can't hear his notes today. They're all blurry. Yeah, Patch is welcome. That's my answer to, <laughs> to that. Yes. But is it though for that kind of thing? I don't know. Yeah, you can run your own version that has there all that go. kind of stuff. There you go. You can have a special. Yep, special league group just for that. Well, I think we should do this, you know, a couple of times a year. This would be nice. Share reports that yeah. we've actually came out of it. Um, I'm sorry, Rogan wasn't here because he, you know, he's the one that he and I sit around and want to talk about when this kind of be cool. So I'll share this with him too. Yeah. I'm just kind of, it may be conference time too. Conference isn't, we'll see if we can't bring this back to the conference group. Uh, this is not the time, but so many of our interest groups are up against each other at the conference. So I'll send a note out to see what we can not coordinate that a little better. While we're there, I'm reading Terrence. We can also make it so simple that we don't have to do anything. Oh, Taryn, I would very much like a world where I didn't have to do anything. That's something I didn't consider that angle at all. Yeah. All right, we're wrapping up. Um, I'm going to come back to that interest group thing through email so we can talk about how to to collaborate on some of this stuff while we're finally all together at a conference. So I digress, but I just wanted while well, we had a couple of different interest groups here, I wanted to share that too. Thanks for this brainstorming yeah. session. I enjoyed it. I really did. So, Bye. Hello, Lily. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.